From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of Evenings Out Late with your fourth stimulus check update of 2022. In this recording direct from Santa Monica, California, that looks a little bit like Seduction Island at the moment. <laughs> We're going to go over the big money that is in this Raycon. It does not look like a Fox reality TV show like Survivor or something. But boy, there's a lot of money in this Raycon. And tonight's recording, we we'll go over the opportunity to get a stimulus check out even sooner than that across the board. It's called CR for Stimulus, and it's back in the mix tonight. We're going to go over the big new comments from Chuck Bernie and the President of the United States, which would send out money across the board. In tonight's recording, so many details, so much to know, and so much happening that's brand new on a big evening of Evening Tell Light. We're gonna go over the incredible money in this incredible recon that is passed in the House of Representatives. Now to the Senate. The big money that will be added in there across the board thereafter with the Senate changes. The money that already is existing in there that pays you a lot Framework's not so much, but the big exciting details is that there is at least $15,000 of checks before we add in a monthly stimulus check, $2,000 the first month thereafter. Then $45,000 of checks, student loan debt forgiveness, the issue at that on covered in this video. And then fifth stimulus and that big cola raise, 5.9%. What you need to know across the board in tonight's recording covered as well. But we're going to go to a new horizon. CR for stimulus with a new date at hand. Could we get a stimulus check into another body of a legislation that is going for a vote sooner than the recon? Get into the beach, get into the water, bring your surfboard, bring your significant other. We're getting hand to hand and we're getting close to getting this done. It's a big, bold, beautiful evening because the surf is up, the stimulus is up, the sunset is up. I gotta run. You got to run. We got to head to the finish line. And we're going to do it as part of the Purple Power family, even though the sunset's a little bit orange tonight. <laughs> Those details are more. As a big, bold, beautiful evening to LA heats up. It's not Seduction Island. It's Stimulus Island. <laughs> Those details are more heats up. As evening to LA gets underway with a new look, a new excitement, and a new push to get a stimulus check into something else that is actually even easier. The excitement starts right now. Hey, good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful evening, and congratulations on a big new month upon us. That recon will pass really quickly, says Joseph Biden and Chuck Schumer, along with Bernie Sanders, in new comments tonight. The big incredible money in that recon has at least $15,000 of checks before they add in that MSC. That has a lot on top of that, plus third stimulus. But the incredible great news tonight is that there may be another way to backdoor a check out sooner than that. How are we going to do it? You can only learn it from this channel. It's CR for Stimulus 2022. You may have heard it on one of the earlier broadcasts today. It's exciting. And this channel made history two years ago. We can make history again. Get that surfboard, and we're going to run for it. We're going to go over all the incredible money in tonight's recording and what you need to know across the land. Then we're going to turn back to the student loan debt forgiveness, fist stimulus, and the big money with that colo raise under fist stimulus. We have a lot to cover in tonight's recording, and all that incredible deliciousness heats up. But first, I want you to go on this video and hit that subscribe button. You have found LA Light. You have looked on the horizon. You found it. You have found the number three most watched financial news channel in America. This, my friends, is LA Light. And I want you part of this incredible family with a massive subscriber growth in recent days. Go under this video right now and subscribe. To become part of this incredible family, you don't want to miss anything across the board. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes, and consider becoming a member. And with that, let's go into all the incredible money in tonight's excitement with that recon 
$15,000 of checks, three clusters, three add-ons. We're going to go over each of them one at a time, starting tonight on evenings. Those three clusters of checks amount to at least $15,000 before we start, but we're going to go over each of those checks before we go over the how and the where. We're going to go over the what, and it all starts right now. $15,000 of checks across three clusters and three add-ons. First cluster is Hazard pay, four thousand dollars of elder care, four thousand dollars of care care for young children, twelve thousand five hundred dollars for the purchase of a new electric vehicle, five hundred fifty dollars check for the Pell Grant recipients. Then the home repairs of a little low income community. Wow! The first add on of checks comes from the illustrious Maxine Waters. She wants to give you twenty five thousand dollars for the purchase of your first home. It'll be a little bit less, but yet that is in there. Money given from the federal government to the seller in your name at the time of escrow. You can't get it better than that. That is the first add-on of checks. Let's slide right into the second cluster of checks starting right now. That second cluster of checks recently heats up. Home repairs and paid leave. The paid leave, $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year. $800 a week if you make $35,000 or more per year. $400 a week if you make $15,000 or more per year. Four weeks per year, and wow, it's incredible. W-2, 1099, you all qualify for it. And if you don't work, but your son or daughter does work, they're going to get the check every time they have to take you to the doctor for an appointment that week. And there we go. Let's go to that $250 billion. Bob Casey got in there, and this is huge. This is money given for free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. Got a little bit less. This was a Joe Biden campaign promise. Got it in there. It's huge, it's very exciting, and it's your second of three add-on checks. Let's go to now the incredible third cluster of checks, and it starts right now with the big payouts across the board. You ready? Here we go. Third cluster has in their free school meals for all checks. The money for the farmers, the money for the independent contractors, the free internet, then the seniors, two types of benefits. Two added on the House side, three to be added on the Senate side. On the House side, they ran with the surfboard and they got it in there. They got in there the big Medicaid gap fix and the hearing aid. But on the Senate side, they vowed to add three other provisions, which are dental, vision, lowering the eligibility age of Medicare from 65 to 55, which is part of the course of what we're talking about when we talk about the third add-on. And you know what that third add-on is. It is an MSC. We're going to go over what an MSC is first. Then we're going to go over the eligibility, then the price point, and then the advocacy. First, what is an MSC? MSC stands for Multiple IRS Stimulus Check. The M is monthly or multiple. And the keyword is IRS because guess what? These legislators want to give it to you. First, that is what it is. Second, let's go over who gets it. Single individual, $75,000 less annual income, you would get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, you get it. Double it. Family of four, if you're on, uh, you would get it as well. Quadruple it. And then people who are adult dependents would get it. Adult uh, people on SSI and SSDI, Social Security and Railroad benefits, they would get it as well. Let's go over some nuances. It's not income. It's not taxable. It is offered nationwide, so if you don't like your state governor, he has nothing to do with it. It comes from the federal government. There are a lot of checks in this recon, and I don't want you to get confused with the other checks in that recon that pay about 60000 multiple checks. These are ones that come from IRS. All right, that is that. Then let's go over how much. Those legislators for the month of May have said $2,000 the first month, $1,000 thereafter for up to six months. Wow, that is incredible. There you go. Now, it's important to advocate for its inclusion because guess what? We're not over the finish line. But let me explain where that finish line is right now. This is why you watch this channel, the number three most watched financial news channel in America. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. Why? Because there's a lot at issue. And what's at issue is understanding where this recon will get done. It's sort of like the Monaco Grand Prix. You're in a car race, you're riding, you're driving your car, and suddenly the announcer goes on air, says, pull over to the side of the road. The race is halted. Doesn't mean the race is ended, doesn't mean it's canceled, doesn't mean you're going to reverse. It's worth putting on hold. 
At the time they put it on hold, this is where we were. The House of Representatives passed the Build Back Better Act, a bill sent it to the Senate. The senators are not House members. They think their own way. So we do not have a Senate bill. Senators have already said they want to add provisions in there as soon as they get to that moment. Wyden, Sanders, Schumer, Warren, all these people say they have stuff to add in there. When and what will that look like? Once the announcer goes on air saying, start your engines, we're going to restart the race, then they start to add their provisions in there. And those, those provisions would be added during a Senate subcommittee meetings, like the House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, but this is on the Senate side. When it's ready, they call for a vote. We have a bill. We call for a vote on the Senate floor. Then we have a two-day vote of But at the moment, we don't have the there. We don't have the bill. So someone says to you, uh, I don't think it's in there. I don't think we're going to get it. It's not in there. There is no there because there is no bill. We have an emoji for this. Not bill yet. Once it goes for a vote, once the voter rama passes, then it becomes law. Now let's go over the importance of advocacy and boy is it important. Those legislators need to hear from you because guess what? They presume you don't need something if they don't hear from you. They heard from you in September, but they may not have heard from you in January. So pick up the phone and advocate. Tell them why you need it. Your situation may be different today than it was back in September. And if you remember the staff you spoke to, tell them why you need it across the board and call once a week. You don't have to call once a day because we don't have a voting date yet at issue. Pick up the phone and tell them your narrative and why it's important. Do not pick up the phone and say, is it in there? Because the there does not exist. Again, we don't have a bill yet. Pick up the phone and advocate. And who do you advocate to? You want to advocate to those six senators. Let's go over their names right now. They are Casey, Coons, Warren, Wyden, Sanders, and Schumer. Advocate for the provisions you want to add in there, whether it's an MSC, whether it's a housing provision, whether it is the home repairs, whatever it is. Pick up the phone and advocate to Casey, Coons, Warren, Wyden, Sanders, and Schumer. In the second half of this video, we have so much coming up. But one of the messages that's important I'm going to give you right before the commercial break is a new comment in the last week from Andrew Bates, the spokesperson of the White House, the President of the United States, says the force of this week on will become law. Wow. He says we have ups and downs, we have bad days, we have good days, but every body of legislation will get passed like every body of legislation from this White House. And that is all you need to know. We will stay on point. We will stay on message with what the White House says. We're not going to run quotes from a legislator or an assistant to a legislator, or a non-legislator, or an analyst. We don't run the quotes from the White House. Because ultimately, the reason why you elect people to become president is because they get things done. It may take a little bit of time, but it will get done. In the second half of this video, we have a lot of exciting news. Bernie Sanders talks about why he thinks the recon is going to get done. Chuck Schumer talks about the recon getting done. Then, we talk about our opportunity to get a check out earlier than a recon. And it's only... Her on this channel, and it's called CR for Simulus 2022. Then we'll turn to the big money in this incredible recon. We'll go back to one guy that's causing a problem for the recon, and he ain't a legislator. Who is he? I have his latest details in this recording. Then we'll be turning to third stimulus, fifth stimulus as well, and where inflation is going. We have a big tonight video. It's all breaking news. It's all brand new. Coming up later tonight, of course, is evening's countdown at 6 o'clock evenings extra at eight o'clock and before that evenings home stream stimulus at seven o'clock be back with you in 60 seconds as this show continues if you want money right now not five days from now and not five weeks from now then reach out to the community page the volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities that's at news.la.com forward slash community the community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you they can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. 
The excitement starts on mornings LL8 at 9 a.m. Home LL8 returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LL8 at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LL8. And the excitement continues right now as Evenings LA runs to the finish line with surfboard in hand. We're going to go over the big recon and the Senate changes that will be added to that incredible recon like an MSC, $2,000 a month. And why Joe Biden wants his money to go out right away. He's ready to send out your four stimulus recon of 2022. We're going to go over the big programs in this recon that has at least $15,000 of checks, upwards of $60,000. And the big money repeating itself from third stimulus, about 45,000. Soon loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that, plus what you need to know about this stimulus and that 5.9% raise. But we're gonna start the video in the second half with going over what Bernie says about that recon and what Joe Biden says with it as well. Chuck Schumer believes that the vote will happen in the next few days, and then we cut back to the one guy that everyone's talking about. <laughs> You think those two people in the water are talking about him as well? They may be. Otherwise, they're talking about me or talking about you. They're talking about someone. They're very gossipy, aren't they? <laughs> those details are more coming up in the second half of this video. I'm excited you're here. But first, go on to this video and hit that subscribe button. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes. And consider becoming a member of Purple Hawk, Purple Power Casino VIP so you not miss a video across the board. Hit that subscribe button and be part of LA, the number three most watched financial news channel in America. And like the video, because every like helps. Also sign up for the membership by hitting that link. Get that Purple Hawk next to your name and get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system and the LA Light alert system. And here we go as we run with our surfboards for the finish line and the breaking news tonight. There's a lot of it. And we're going to start first with Bernie Sanders' comments. Bernie Sanders' comments are the following. He loved what happened last week. What happened? The Voting Rights Initiative called for a vote, failed. The Senate rules called for a vote, failed. He liked it. Why? He says it's better to call a vote and have it fail than never call the vote. And guess who also likes that? You do, and I do as well. We talked about this a lot in late 2021, how the Nancy Pelosi School of Legislation says never call a vote and have it fail because it looks bad. We said, no, it looks good to call the vote for several reasons. One... You learn who is against the legislation in your party, Democrats. And then also, when you learn it, maybe you fix it and call for a vote again, and then you get it passed. Number two, it really gets a legislative record clear that Republicans don't want that money to go out to help Americans across the board. And that is something you can bring into the midterm elections. So what did Bernie Sanders say? say? This is what we should have been doing all along in 2021. I'm glad we're starting to do it right now. We've been negotiating with two senators, he's referring to Steve Sinema and Manchin, for five months, and it's gotten us nowhere. And so we need to take a new course of action. I think that what we've done so far is make it clear where the 48 of us, <laughs> that's excluding Sinema and Manchin, stand. I think like that's what we have to do to make it clear going forward. Right now, we're playing in the Republicans' hand by not having them vote against anything. So he's basically saying, hey, we need to know where our fellow Democrats stand. And also, we can't shadow the vote. We can't hide the vote because ultimately there's no record that the Republicans were against it that we can use in the midterm elections. Fascinating. Then, Chuck Schumer basically says that the recon will be calling for a vote in the next couple of days, approximately. And this is great news as the President of the United States says it's going to become a law. That is also really great news. More in a second about that CR for stimulus, but first I want to go into one guy that's causing a big problem for the recon that is identifying a series of news reports, new reports this day, and I started covering them about oh, uh, two days ago. Who is this guy? He is the number one guy to Joseph Biden. He is his chief of staff, and his name is Ron Klain. Ron Klain is now identified as a big problem for the recon, which is the president's agenda. So why would the president's number one guy be a problem for his number one piece of legislation? 
a series of reasons, some of which you could have figured out as well, some of which we've talked about before on this channel, and some of which are new. Let's go over all the details, and the great news is that this can all get fixed by discussing it and makes it easy to get a fix. Number one, the first accusation is that Ron Klain does not prioritize. And whether it's Ron Klain or Joseph Biden, I really do think it's Ron Klain, I think this is absolutely true, and we've been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> Brian D.C., the Yale that is in the White House's administration, is the epitome of bad prioritization. What does he want to do? He wants to give money to people who are not with us yet. <laughs> what do you mean not with us? They haven't arrived. They're late in traffic. No, they're just not born. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. He wants to give stimulus to people who are not yet uh, on this planet. They're not even in the solar system. They're just not... <laughs> they're not due for a few more months. <laughs> So that just it just sounds ridiculous. And there are people that are live, they're watching the video, and they're being excluded because we're taking care of people who are not yet born. Uh, that is really bad prioritization. And that maybe that's what they teach you at Yale. Take care of people that aren't with you before people that are actually alive. <sighs> wow. Number two, uh, climate. Climate, 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 climate. And I gotta tell you, it's it has been a joke of the administration. I have no problem saying it's a joke of the administration. It is a joke. Because they put climate day one as the first priority. And guess what? They got no climate passed. And climate has held up everything else because climate is very polarizing. They could have done climate in a way which was not polarizing. They could have put it by itself. And by putting it in the recon, by going to a climate convention promising all this climate, it never got passed and it held up everything else. That's also an example of prioritization. The great thing with prioritization is it's not a, a systemic problem. You yeah, come in today and say, hey, we're doing recon tomorrow. Okay, get the rest of the stuff off my desk. We're not doing this. We're just for some of recon. Done. I mean, that's an easy problem to fix. The President of the United States had a press conference late last week, said, I want to have outsiders who are not part of government to come in and give their opinion of the situation and how to get stuff done. I don't know who to recommend for this. Do you have anyone I, I, to recommend for this uh, volunteer position? You know, he, the President wants to hear from some people who are very educated and informed and, and how to get stuff done sooner and quicker. And I, I, if you know anyone, just recommend the person. All right. Number two. Ron Klain is, this is the part that is troubling. Ron Klain is really accused of not doing what a chief of staff is supposed to do. The chief of staff is sort of like the customer service department on the cell phone company. <laughs> You're just so tired of that cell phone company. And you know which department you call? You call the, um, the customer loyalty department. You don't know about that customer loyalty? You're just so angry at them, you call customer loyalty, which says, I'm about to leave. You're about to leave? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a discount. <laughs> okay, now I'm very happy. He, The chief of staff is supposed to be sort of like the customer loyalty. Always tries to keep you a, pay, uh, a loyal customer. I'm here to help you. I'm here to be very kind to you. <laughs> what is Ron Clayton portrayed as? He's portrayed as sort of um, the anti-customer loyalty. He's like, you want to get lost? Then get lost. Here's the, here's the, guy, here's the map to get lost. <clears throat> we knew there may have been a problem last November, December, where Pramila Jalapal, the head of the Progressive Caucus in the House, said, you know what? I'm on the phone all day long with Ron. He's just so nice. And I immediately said, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> I just sensed this a problem. If she's on the phone all day long with him, then there's someone who's not on the phone with him. Now, I'm embellishing all day long, but she said she speaks to him every day for a few hours. I said, there's something wrong, because if he's on the phone that many hours with her, then he's definitely not on the phone with someone else. The evidence that there was a problem manifests itself in late December, when Joe Manchin said what he was sort of suggesting in November, that not only is Ron Klain not available to talk to moderate Democrats, but he comes after moderate Democrats. A bad look, a really bad look. You know, you're a boss. You got two employees. You like one, you don't like the other. What do you do? You, you, put, a, um, you put a voodoo doll, the employee you don't like, at the front of the entrance and say, anyone who doesn't like this guy, put a pin in him. Uh, that's not the way you manage a business. And that's not the way a chief of staff manages a staff. He issued all these press releases anti-Joe Manchin in December. 
uh, let's let's recap. You need Joe Manchin to pass your recon. It's not like Joe Manchin is uh, is a Republican and he's not going to be part of the voting caucus. He's a Rep Democrat. You need Joe Manchin to pass the legislation. So what are you doing? You're on the phone uh, um, braiding Jala Paul's hair every day for two hours, and then Joe Manchin, you're you're um, doing voodoo, voodoo doll uh, stick pinning all day long for the rest of the day. It's just a bad look. And guess what? I haven't got to the third group that he's not dealing with. And those are, of course, Republicans. Joseph Biden, many, many years as a senator. He has a lot of Republican senators he adores that are very close friends of his. He came in on day one. He says, I'm going to reach across the aisle, <laughs> which I envision is like Grand Canyon. <laughs> Grand Canyon. Between him and Mitch, is like Grand Canyon. It's like the Suez Canal times 20 miles. Uh, I'm going to reach across the, 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 the aisle to uh, do things bipartisan with my Republicans. Okay. I believe that's what he, his position is. <laughs> Ron Clayton. His position is, uh, who's on the phone? Oh, it's a Republican sent a voicemail. <laughs> Who's on the phone? It's a Republican Sam. I'm, I'm, I'm out to lunch. I'll be back in five hours from now. Who's on the phone, Mitch? Um, say, uh, block the number. <laughs> that's what Ron Klein is doing. And that's not the clear message. Either you block the phone calls for the Republicans and put them on the block list on the cell phone, or you do the reverse. So that personality trait has to change. The third one is mid-level staffers in the White House say that the president is not accessible because Ron Klain is sort of shadowing and hiding him out. Now, you and I all have heard this for a very long time, a long time. This has been the talk of the town for, for months, that the president is really not there, that it's all being run by, by his, his staffers. We got that. But here's the part of, part of the article that's new that we've never heard before. Ron Klain is not around either. So wait a second, who, who's running the business here? If the owner of the business, the president's gone, and the operations guy, the manager, the, the general manager is gone, Ron Klein, then who's running the business? Uh, you know, it just sounds very strange. So this has to be fixed. This really has to be fixed. And I like that this is a front page news article. I like that I'm making recordings about this because the more we talk about the more people are going to get to Ron Klain saying, you got to stop this. The article also, I'm not going to run all the quotes, but the article had chief of staffs from prior Democratic president's staff, uh, uh, administrations and says, this is not how you run a, an office. This is not how you run an office. You remember the first 100 days of the Trump administration? It was a fiasco as well. The first 100 days, you're trying to get used to how things are run. And there were a lot of firings the first 100 days of the Trump administration. Like every two minutes, there was someone fired. Uh, this guy, he needs to change really quickly. And if he doesn't, then he needs to take the benefit of one of the best provisions of the recon, which is $40 billion of free job training to take a new job. <laughs> Isn't that a great segue? Yeah, here we go. So we're going to go over all these incredible checks this recon. There are, um, how many pages is this? I mean, look how thick it is. This is some of the checks. Remember, the recon was... Uh, written and passed in the House in 2021. The senators will enhance those provisions. They're not going to remove them. And then they'll add more provisions in there. So as a Purple Hawk, you need to know everything that's in this recon from 2021. Don't think it's going to be written brand new in 2022. It ain't. This is where the law, this is where the provisions start. So take a pen and paper notes, follow along with me, and we start right now. $72,500 will be deductible on state and local taxes uh, on your federal taxes or tax return of what you pay in state local taxes. Raising up from $10,000, this is a salt cap. Then they got in there cheaper prescription medication. Growing from 20 medications a day one to 30 medications at year 2028. Cancer, authorized diabetes, the most expensive medications across the board. Medicare Part B and D. We went over the free job training for chief of staffs that need to potentially go. Uh, <laughs> we went over then one provision earlier, but now let's touch on it in more details now. It is the Medicaid gap fix. 12 Republican states vowed to never provide low-income uninsured citizens of that state medical insurance. And so Raphael Warnock, the wonderful uh, senator from Georgia, and Joe Manchin got this provision together to provide that across the board. We're going to go over housing in a second, but let's turn forward to some other provisions 
new tuition $65 per month if you uh, are not in school, $550 check for the Pell Grant, $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle. They have the provisions that are continuing from third stimulus. So if you got them under third stimulus, here they are continuing. The CTC, the child tax credit, one more year. The household tax credit continuing. The the hazard pay, the earned income tax credit for central workers continuing one more year as well. Then all the new provisions like um, the dental vision that Bernie wants to add in there, which brings us then to the housing provision and the importance of that housing provision. The housing provision really is the big money in this recon. Two provisions new, the other provisions existing. The two provisions new are home repairs to live in a low-income community, then the weatherize your home. The other provisions continuing from third stimulus, and they're $45,000, and they are rent, utilities, mortgage assistance. Let's go over what's going on. In April of 2020, this channel launched, and my focus was to get people big money, and I got you big money, $25 million of EID loans and grants at the time, saving businesses, businesses homes, and more. In fall of December 2020, we saw an issue, and the issue was that Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin were not getting a potential second stimulus done. So I stepped forward, I said, let me get you some money for rent. And I got the money for rent, and that money for rent was incredible. That money was $250,000 when there wasn't a lot around. But at the time, I had a preview of what was coming for third stimulus. And I said, when this third stimulus becomes law, you'll be able to get a lot of money. 15,000, I was wrong. Viewers on average got 45,000. This is the first round. Last summer, they got another round. Then in December 2020, they got, 2021, they got the Christmas round. So you can get another round today as well. The rent utilities, mortgage, this is food you want to get out as far as possible. Let's shoot for May. Not available to May, then go to April, then go to March. Six places, here you go. Follow along with the newsletter. All features for members in that nightly newsletter. Rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, six places, city hall, city house authority, county hall, county house authority, state hall, state house authority. The keywords you can say are rent assistance because of COVID, mortgage or utility assistance because of COVID. You want to get that big money across the board. Lean on the nonprofits because guess what? It's January. Guess what? They get replenished with new money in January. Which brings us to CR for stimulus. And it's only something you're going to hear on this channel. We brought it back on this channel just a few hours ago, and boy, people are excited for it. It's the opportunity to potentially, potentially, get out a stimulus check before the Build Back Better Act becomes a law. What's at issue? Let me explain the details to you right now. First, if you were not a viewer at the time, this is what happened in December of 2020. I was sitting back, Recording about Steve and Nancy, Steve and Nancy, Steve and and Nancy Pelosi. I was blue in the face. They couldn't get it done. I said, this is enough already. And I knew there was a deadline coming up for something called the government spending bill. It's for money that is spent to run the government. I said, how about we put a stimulus check in there? People said, a stimulus check in there? It doesn't belong. This is money to run the government. Why would there be a check for people? in a program to fund the government. I said, oh, that's very easy. You know why? Because that's how government runs. There's always legislation where they're putting stuff in there that doesn't belong. During COVID's early days, they had money for foreign governments in there. They had monies for the Department of Copyrights. They put stuff in these things that don't belong all the time. And I said, how about we try to push to put a stimulus check in there? And we did. And initially, they thought I was crazy. They said it doesn't belong. I said, I know it doesn't belong. Just try. And they came back and said, yeah, we'll put some stimulus in there. We'll put in there a unemployment stimulus. I said, no, that's wrong. We want a stimulus check. And we pushed. It got in there. It got removed. And then it stayed. And that, my friends, was history. I came up with the idea. I created the idea. The Purple Power pushed for the idea. And it was called CR for stimulus. Hashtag C, Charles, R, Robert, the number four, stimulus, S-T-I-M-U-L-U-S. And it became the second stimulus check, $600 stimulus check. I got it. It was my idea, and you made it happen as a reality. 
Today, I asked viewers, hey, do you want to bring it back? Because we may have another opportunity on our hands. Doesn't There's never a guarantee on any of these things. But this one looks like a possibility. February 18th, there's a government funding deadline. <laughs> Sound familiar? Here we go. February 18th, a deadline to fund the federal government. Well, let's try it. CR for Stimulus 2022. Let's try to advocate to include a stimulus check in this CR just a few days away. Now, let's be honest. We don't play games here. This would not be a multiple stimulus check. This would not be $6,000 of checks or twenty or 30000 This may only be $1,200, may only be $1,400, maybe be $2,000. But it doesn't negate the recon. doesn't negate the Build Back Better Act. It's just an extra check to go out while they're trying to get the Build Back Better Act done. Why not slide in a check there? We've waited long enough. The president says he wants to send out the money right away. He says he's ready. Slide it in across the board. That's why it makes sense to get it done. Now, let's turn to student loan debt forgiveness and fiscal stimulus and inflation. Student loan debt forgiveness. There is an offer from the president to send out $10,000 of student loan debt. Democrats want more. I don't think they should hold out anymore. I think they should take what's offered and that they can get more money at a later date. They should do that as well. Then fiscal stimulus. Fisk stimulus, your COLA benefits went up 5.9% this month. They will stay at that higher level going forward. But what's important to understand is that COLA looks to be replaced by inflation under Fisk stimulus. First, they want to raise your benefits up a lifetime, then apply a new benchmark. The new benchmark would be inflation. Remove the asset cap, remove the income cap, and remove the marriage penalty across the board so that you would get more in benefits. Where's that inflation going? Well... It was early last year where I said, I say the inflation rate will be 8% in December 2021. People thought I was crazy. Again, reoccurring thing. Uh, the Federal Reserve said it was going to be 1% to 2% transitory temporary and come back down. I said, no, I think it's going to be 8%. It's not going to be temporary. Wall Street said 2 to 3% temporary. I said, no, I don't see it. I see 8% and I don't think it's temporary. Department of Labor released the inflationary number last, well, now it's been about a week and a half ago. 7.5% and not yet temporary. Now, how can you do this analysis yourself? How can you be taught by me right this moment about how to predict inflation yourself? It's very, very easy. You don't have to have any financial background. All you have to do is like bread, milk, or eggs. <laughs> That's how you do it. When you go to the same market, if you go to the same market to buy bread, milk, or eggs, and you always buy the same brand, the same quantity, the same market, the same location. Everything is the same. You can gauge inflation. How do you do it? Let me use bread as an example. And it's always the same loaf. It's always the same brand. If the bread was $3 the first week of January, and then the next week was $3.10, and then a week after that was $3.15, and the week after that it was $3.25, you see it's moving up. Remember how it moves up. Remember the amount it's moving up. And that is a gauge of inflation. Here's an example. Let's say it goes from $3 to $3.30 in 30 days. That's 10%. Now, that doesn't mean inflation will be 10% because inflation is based upon a lot of other things besides that. For example, we've seen where meat has gone up more inflation than butter. It's just sort of what's going on. It's this craziness. But if it goes up 10%, boy, that's a very clear indication it's going, it's heading up. Uh, and not and not uh, and not stalling. Now, if you do this for more than two months, if you do this in January and February, then you can compare. If we're still going up every ten cents every week for that bread of that market in February, then we got a big issue. The issue is Omicron. Omicron is a very big issue. And the other way you can gauge inflation is the following: You go into a business. You like to chat with people. You're a very talkative person. Ask them how many people are out sick of Omicron. Oh, we're out twenty percent staff. Ask the next business. You like to talk a lot? Ask them. How many people are out for, st for Omicron? Oh, 30%. If you hear this a lot, and you hear this week after week, then you gauge inflation as that issue. Why? Because Omicron causes inflation. How? If people are out of, out of work, the employer has to spend money to replace that worker. With overtime, with healthy workers, temporary workers, which are expensive, or hiring new workers. And that employer is going to spread the costs over to the consumer. 
bringing the price of bread from $3 to $3.30. And that's how you gauge inflation. Before I give you the inflationary numbers in early February delivered by the Department of Labor. Finally, a lot of stuff coming up this next week. Stay with me. This week we'll have the new uh, numbers for corporate America impacted by Omicron. They not may not be good. Crypto crashing. Big concerns about inflation that may cause flipping of the inflation of the 10-year Treasury note. And the concerns of world diplomacy with a lot of unrest in uh, Eastern Europe. All those details and more as we go into a big evenings. But coming up tonight is a whole slate of programming. Evenings LA, brand new at 5 o'clock. Evenings Countdown, 6 o'clock. Then Home Street and at 7 o'clock. Evenings Extra at 8 o'clock. And then the excitement continues on Eve on L8 overnight. Shows at 9, 10, 11, 30. We're back with Sunrise L8 at 3 and 3.30. And then back into early mornings. I'll a brand new show as well. And with that, I want you to go to the family. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers on YouTube record. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes. And consider becoming a member. Stay informed, stay focused. Tell your friends to come on over here. Thank you for all the incredible subscriber growth in recent days. Keep on pushing. Keep on advocating. Stay focused, stay positive, and stay with Ally from Alive.